Orto offers 3 different laser modules and my package included all 3 types. The cheapest module named LU2-2 has a laser diode with a focal length of 50mm and an input power of about 8W, delivering a laser output power of 1.6W. The two more powerful modules have diodes with an electric input power of around 16W and a laser output power of 5.5W. The focal length of the two modules is different. Type LU2-4LF for long focus has a focal length of 50mm like the first module... ...while with the type LU2-4SF for short focus it is only 30mm. The mechanics is composed of 20x20mm extruded aluminum for the X axis and 20x40mm extruded aluminum for the Y axis. The two axes are each driven by a stepper motor via timing bells and they are guided by plastic rollers with ball bearings along the extruded aluminum. The backlash of the mechanics can be minimized via eccentric nuts so that the laser runs smoothly along the axis. Both axes have limit switches to which the laser head is moved whenever the Alfaro gets powered on. The maximum work error is 18x18cm. The machine is controlled by a mainboard with an ESP32 microcontroller. Garble runs on this CPU so that the machine can be operated with open source software. That's how it should be, devices with closed source firmware will no longer enter my workshop. Same as with my Laser Master 2 Pro, I have connected a Raspberry Pi via the USB interface, thanks to Garble, the scripts I have written work for both devices. This means that I can transfer files to the machine via a browser interface, here I am using my smartphone. With its compact dimensions and the Raspberry Pi as a web server, the Alfaro is a very portable tool. This is a great advantage when working without a protective metal box. The materials to be engraved are burnt or evaporated which releases harmful vapors. You can easily take the Alfaro outside or at least put it in front of an open window to keep the odor out. It is mandatory to wear protective goggles when working with lasers. My test series starts with the cheap 1.6W laser module. The cylindrical spacer is required for focusing, this must fit between the lower edge of the laser housing and the workpiece. The height of the laser modules can be adjusted for that purpose. All materials that can be burned with the laser can be engraved directly. Wood is a fairly unproblematic material, here I engrave a graphics on a piece of plywood. The dimensions of the graphic are approximately 10x6.5cm. Works very well, the graphics is engraved with a grid of around 300 dpi, so the laser head moves 0.08mm per pixel. As protection against the high energy of the laser beam, an orange plastic cover can be adjusted so that only a small gap remains between the hood and the workpiece. The cover is open to the rear so the protection is incomplete, wearing goggles is mandatory even with the plastic cover. I have set the laser power to 80% corresponding to 1.3W. If not absolutely necessary, you should avoid the maximum power in favor of a longer life of the laser. The job is finished after about 1 hour. The same file is engraved with the LU2-4LF laser module, next. Only 20% of the maximum power is used here, which corresponds to 1.1W and therefore less than the power with the previously used laser module. 
The reason is that the cross section of the laser beam is a bit smaller at the focal point and thus the power is concentrated on a smaller area. An aluminum nozzle is screwed onto the lower end of the laser module. The fan installed on top used to cool the laser diode blows the exhaust air onto the workpiece through this nozzle. The purpose of this arrangement is to blow the smoke that is emitted when burning the wood away from the laser beam. Otherwise, the laser beam will be scattered on the dust particles, which means that less light power reaches the workpiece. It is a simple version of air assist, a method of improving the quality of engraving or cutting workpieces. Due to the finer laser beam, you can clearly see the lines the bitmap graphic is composed of. With this module, the resolution should be increased in order to achieve a more detailed engraving. The last candidate is the module with the short focal length. Here, the nozzle and cover combination is held in place at the lower end via magnets. In contrast to the two previous modules, a 3mm thick piece of acrylic plastic must fit between the lower edge of the nozzle and the workpiece for correct focusing. The laser power applied to the wood corresponds roughly to that of the previous module with the long focal length, so the power is also set to 20%. Since the laser beam of this module is focused on an even smaller area, I have now loaded a higher resolution graphic and reduced the grid size to only 0.054mm. With the same total dimensions, the graphic is now burned onto the wood with 450 dpi. The job takes significantly longer, but the result is also significantly more detailed. Photos of the results are on my website, so you can get your own impression of the quality the three laser modules deliver. According to Autor, the more powerful modules are also suitable for engraving stainless steel. To do this, however, the surface should be covered with a marker. All colors that can absorb the laser light are suitable, you are on the safe side with black, but red also works fine. I don't use stainless steel but a piece of normal steel that I usually weld into rusty areas of my cars. Due to its better thermal conductivity, this material is in general less suitable for engraving. First I have used the module with the long focus... ...and directly below the module with the short focus. The lettering is engraved with maximum laser power and a speed of 100mm per minute. The file is not a bitmap, but a vector graphic, only the outlines of the letters are engraved. After washing off the paint with the help of alcohol, the result can be seen or hardly seen. The laser module with the long focal length transferred significantly less energy to the metal surface, so the lettering is hard to recognize. The module with the short focal length on the other hand has engraved a clearly visible lettering, the smaller area of the laser beam at the focal point is a noticeable benefit for engraving. But here too it should be noted that the engraving is not very deep and can easily be rubbed off with steel wool for example. The lettering should be fixed with clear varnish if the workpiece is exposed to mechanical stress. Let's start to cut plywood, the main purpose of the Alfero in my workshop. As a test, a disc with a diameter of 25mm is cut. The 1.6W laser is suitable for cutting 2mm plywood. For the job, the laser power is set to 80% and the cutting speed to 300mm per minute. The disc is cut out after 5 passes and thus a duration of 1 minute. Since such thin plywood is no real challenge for the 5.5W laser modules, I will continue with 4mm poplar plywood. 
the 1.6W laser fails to cut this material. Even after 12 passes with a cutting speed of only 100mm per minute, you still need a little force to break out the disc. This can't be called laser cutting. With the 5.5W laser module with short focal length, only two passes with 300mm per minute and 80% power are required to cut out the disc. With the long focus module we get the same result with the same settings. The fact that the disc does not fall down by gravity after two passes is due to the thinner cutting line that causes the disc to jam in the hole. Let's continue with 6mm poplar plywood. The laser power is still set to 80%, the cutting speed to 300mm per minute. The smoke generated when burning the plywood can be clearly seen. Did I already mention that working with lasers leads to strong odor? It can be seen that the smoke is blown away quite well from the laser beam by the fan on top of the module. Four passes are required with the short focal length module. The same material is now processed with the same settings using the long focus module. Here too you can see how the smoke is blown away from the laser beam by the fan. The disc falls down again after 4 passes. If you have a compressor or an air pump for fish tanks for example, you can mount the metal nozzle to the LF module that is included in the package in order to blow more air onto the cutting edge. This significantly increases the air assist effect. A stronger airflow is better directed onto the cutting edge. Air assist leads to even finer cuts through the material. For this experiment I have increased the cutting speed to 400mm per minute. In general, very thin cuts are made with laser machines, with which you can cut out fine structures that would not be feasible with a handsaw. For this video I continued to write on the software scripts with which I control my two auto laser devices. With these Python scripts files in scalable vector graphics format or SVG for short can be processed and sent to the laser cutter, thanks to Garble. The precision the Alfero Laser 1 delivers results in cutout workpieces with very low tolerances. I am infected by the virus laser cutting, so there will hopefully be more videos in the not too distant future. As usually, more information about the device and photos in high